मैं करने चाहूँ गुड आफ्टरनून सर Yes, sir. Presently, you are undergoing training. Yes, sir. Uh, I am on extraordinary leave, sir. Uh, so I am. Uh, you are not joined. No, sir. I have joined and taken leave. Taken. Not even at C R M. No, sir. Tell me something about this your paper. Paper on cost estimation, cost cover. Sir, uh, in my final year, I did my dual degree project. That is the MTech project. For that, uh, I did this research paper, sir, so in which I try to estimate, uh, I try to understand why there is so much cost as uh, cost overrun in our country, and I try to understand it from a perspective of cost estimators, that how their estimates are going wrong. So what I basically did, I divided the industry into major stakeholders, and then I interacted with the cost estimators in those stakeholders. For example, I visited large contractors, small contractors, and I tried to understand their methodology, and from that, sir, using the Delphi method. Uh, using their interviews, I tried to come out with the solutions why this cost estimation and cost overrun is happening. So the cost overrun, cost overrun will be different factors, sir. Yes, sir. There are different factors. So what, why their uh, estimation was not accurate? That I tried to understand from them. Mm, see, if uh, accurate estimation is done, that this work is to be completed in two years, and if these, these parameters are satisfied. Yes, sir. But uh, government has not given sanction. Government has delayed it. Covid came, and and uh, some natural calamities are there. So these factor, these factors are accounted. Yes, sir. Are these accounted? Yes, yes. sir. This will not be accounted in the cost uh, estimation. Sir, uh, that is the reason that uh, I asked them that why our cost estimates are not going correct. So they explained me that what are the reasons their cost estimates are not going on. So reasons mentioned as by you. That uh, getting land acquisition, getting sanctions at the right point of time, mm -hmm. even delays, forced mazure events. So all those events were uh, conducted. At the same time, other main reasons they that decided is lack of project planning. For example, they do not have adequate uh, technology. They are using very old uh, methods of cost estimation. Even they are not using reference class forecasting, which is generally an international practice in which they try to compare with the similar projects once they have calculated such cost. So these were one of the major factors that I found out. Uh, your neighboring state, uh, they, are, uh, they have a number of schemes. That is good. Some there is some scheme, Grameen, Bhumi, Heem, Krishi Yojana. You know that? Krishi must go to Yojana. Sorry, sir, I have not read about it. It's coming. Full, full page advertisements are coming. And uh, something, Godan, Nya Yojana. Yes, sir, I have heard about the Nya Yojana. Mm -hmm. Land. Yes, sir. In Nyaya Yojana, uh, the landless farmers, farmer families, will be given six thousand rupees cash, direct cash benefit transfer in their account yearly. And uh, I was just reading that they are monetizing cow dung also. Yes, sir. There is a, a Godhan scheme in which, sir, they are giving a uh, if uh, my memory serves me correctly, around one point five rupees per kg of cow dung. They are claiming that this is first time it is being done in India. Yes, sir. This is it first time mm -hmm. because cow dung is generally used for uh, as a fertilizer. Hmm? So if it is used as a fertilizer, that is also monetization. Mm -hmm. We are selling money on uh, conventional fertilizers. So how it is being done for the first time? Cow dung is never a waste. Villages are using it either for for, for uplas and for the Fuel, fuel wood? Yes, sir. Or in the fields? Yes, sir. There are multiple utilization of cow dung that we ah, see. So, that's what I mean. This big, big advertisement, first time in the country is being monetized. Making fool of the public? Is it? Sir, I believe it is more uh, done in a more formalized manner. So that uh, directly they can procure it from the uh, villagers. Because, sir, when we are using it for ourselves, let's say I am a farmer and I have Ten cows, so I won't need so much cow dung. I will need probably cow dung. Uh, but you know, in the villages, there is a uh, system of selling it also. If I am a farmer, I don't have cows and all. I purchase from others. Sorry, sir, I don't know how about this. Okay, uh, you have to develop a new city. 
you find the capital. Okay, that is uh, your CM's desire. Yes, sir. What all factors you will keep into mind, and what in what way you will prioritize that your work starts in the first year itself. Mm -hmm. What work you will start in the first year, and major steps you will take. And, and that particular land patch is adjoining to the city and few villages are also there. So the first most important uh, will be fo population forecasting and understanding what will be the demand of the city in future. Not just now, but 50-70 years down after. Second main step would be sir to survey the area, not just from the uh, not just from the civil engineering perspective, but from other perspective also. For example, what is the wind direction? Uh, what is the uh, ge geotechnical condition, ge geological conditions of that area? Is it disaster prone? How risky disaster are there? So such things. Thirdly, sir, I need to start uh, finding out what will be the city center of my city. And I have to design uh, as per the transit orient oriented development model as it is prevalent in the uh, modern cities. In this model, sir, there is a minimum level of tra uh, transportation that we need to do and there is maximum efficiency that comes in the city. So that will be my main uh, focus. Then sir, I will decide uh, about the villagers. Since there are so many villagers and uh, their land is very important and it is source of all livelihood for them and hence making them partner in this development will be essential. So making sure either they are getting rehabilitated or they are giving a share in the development process through the value capture financing. Okay, okay. Uh, what's the fruit of uh, Madhya Pradesh? Uh, state fruit? So it's mango. And tree? So it's banyan. Shubham. Yes, sir. Uh, how does the geography of a particular region impact the construction methodology that's followed? So geography has a very important role in deciding the construction. If I give an example, for example, in Chennai, when we have a uh, we have a, uh, we we have a climatic condition where there is a sea around, so uh, there is increased sulfur sulfide content in the soil and uh, and in the water, and hence we need to use sulfate resisting cement. Secondly, sir, let, let's talk about northeast. So we have an excess of bamboo and other. Uh, natural materials that we can use for construction. Thirdly, sir, if a, if a geography of a region is such that it has is a disaster prone, let's say in Japan, then we are using lightweight materials like the uh, wood. And even, sir, uh, when we just talk about this much about materials, when we talk about a designing method, for example, sir, when we have to design the orientation of the building, if it is a very tropical area, then we generally design the building in a north-south direction so that we get maximum output of sun and minimum heating uh, problem. Can you tell me some about disaster uh, resilient construction techniques? Let's say take XYZ disaster, this is what is being done. Sir, so, uh, if we take the case of earthquake, then we have base isolation techniques that we have. We have mass dampener techniques also. And there's a new technique is also coming in Japan where we're trying to separate the whole building from the uh, uh, from the ground by making a pit and uh, filling up the uh, 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 sand or other li uh, lightweight material so that uh, the energy of the disaster does not transmit to the building. Secondly, sir, if we take the case of the cyclones, then uh, then generally the design orientation of the building is such that we do not have sharp corners or uh, where the uh, wind vertex can be formed. Or at the same time, we can also use the landscaping uh, of the trees and other areas. Even mangroves are used for shelter beds. Then, sir, if we are taking the case of uh, if there is an issue of water, for example, floods and droughts are common, then we can use the uh, rainwater harvesting system in a very uh, in a very uh, important manner. For example, in in Chennai, where is one year we face we are facing extreme drought, other year we are facing extreme flood. So we have developed rainwater harvesting systems. Modern construction methodology has come up with a lot of smart materials. Yes, sir. But uh, despite that, if you look at uh, all these, uh, what do you call? Uh, historical structures, they seem to be much more stronger and more resilient. Look at all the forts and bridges and things which have been constructed early. Do you think there has been a decline in quality of construction? Sir, 
Sir, in my opinion, there has not been a decline in the quality. What earlier used to do is the kings used to have a, a very large amount of resources that they could tap into. And secondly, sir, their main purpose was to create a heritage, to create a legacy. So they used to create such big forts and strength was the main criteria for them. Longevity was the main criteria for them. And they did not care about the how much money it might take them. But when it comes to the current modern techniques, sir, the main criteria for us is functionality. So that we can get the maximum out of the building, maximum out of the structure uh, in minimum resources. And hence, sir, we are looking for sustainable buildings, green buildings. If we want, sir, we can also design a building which might last, let's say, thousand years. But we, that is not our uh, criteria right now. Okay. So, planned obsolescence. Yes. Planned obsolescence. Are you familiar with the concept of planned obsolescence? Sorry, sir, I'm not on. Right. You have studied in Madras. Yes, sir. You are from Madhya Pradesh. Yes, sir. What are the cultural differences that you experience between Madhya Pradesh and uh, Mahanagar? So firstly was the uh, empowerment of women. When I see the empowerment of women in Tamil Nadu, it is at much higher level than compared to let's say Madhya Pradesh. Secondly, sir, uh, the caste system is very much prevalent in Madhya Pradesh. In, uh, you can directly see the caste everywhere. But in Tamil Nadu, the caste system is there, but it is, uh, it is subtle. So that is the second thing. For example, if you are thinking about marriage or something, then you notice the caste system in Tamil Nadu, but not in the general life. Thirdly, sir, in Madhya Pradesh, it is mostly a rural area. Around 75% of the Madhya Pradesh population is rural. But in Tamil Nadu, it is only around 45% is rural. So, Tamil Nadu is much more an urbanized uh, cultural civilization than the uh, Madhya Pradesh. Compare performance of Niti Ayog with our uh, planning commission. Sir, I believe these two are very different organizations which have, which have very different mandate. For example, the mandate of planning commission was to design five-year plans so that country can decide on how to expand its plant expenditure. But when it comes to Niti Aayog, its mandate is more to bring reforms in the governments and reforms so that uh, it is primarily a think tank for the government. Secondly, sir, Niti Aayog is, uh, Niti Aayog is trying to bring new ideas uh, in the government. It is trying to uh, partner with the uh, foreign players, partner with the private players without actually disrupting the idea of governance, without uh, disrupting the existing norms of the government. So it is trying to do reforms without changing the basic structure of the government. Thirdly, sir, uh, planning commission was more of a top-down approach, where the most of the decisions were taken by the planning commission members. But in Niti the most of the decisions they are trying to bring the bottom-up approach. A good example of that would be the aspirational district program. In which, sir, they are trying to empower the district magistrate state prabharis, so that a revolution can come at the ground level. So these are the major issues. This uh, hobby of watching regional cinema you developed in Tamil Nadu? Yes sir. So what Tamil movies have you watched? So I have watched a lot of Tamil movies. Uh, recently, uh, recently <laughs> I have watched a movie called Super Deluxe. Then I have watched a movie called Mandela. And then uh, I have also watched movies of uh, can you tell me about the Mandela, the movie Mandela? Yes. So it's a very interesting concept. It is set up into, in the uh, in the backdrop of a panchayat election. So basically, the whole village is divided in the, on the basis of caste. There are two castes, Northerner and Southerner. And two stepbrothers are fighting the election. There is only one person, a barber, who has not decided where his vote will go. And he is not at all respected in the whole village. <coughs> I think you have seen more Tamil movies than I do. <laughs> I'm not aware of any of the movies you mentioned. Oh, but did you see Radhinikan's movie? Yes, sir. Black is that thing? Yes, sir. Did you see Annamalai? No. No, sir. Because Japanese, you know, they saw it many times. Those people are crazy about Annamalai. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> but tell me, do good things and do bad things about Chennai. Sir, the best thing about Chennai that I found is law and order. You can, yes, sir. You can go out. It is much better than Madhya Pradesh, sir, that I found. Okay. So you can go out at night at 12 o'clock also, and you will always find policemen having a having your back. Where in Chennai? 
in Chennai. Yes, sir. Okay. So, law and order is very good in Chennai. Secondly, sir, I feel that women empowerment is one thing which I really like about Chennai. Uh, I I found that most of the women that I interacted with, they were doing some kind of profession they had. That is not something that I see in the urban setting in Madhya Pradesh. Secondly, sir, if I have to say about two bad things, the first bad thing uh, I would say is weather. It is very uh, hot and humid weather, and uh, most of the year uh, for a person like me, it was uh, difficult, especially in the initial. Second thing, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I think. So. Yes, sir. Second thing, sir. I think, sir, there's too many uh, hero worship in. Uh, Tamil Nadu or Chennai in particular, you walk in any road and you find posters and posters of either cinema people or uh, politician. So I feel that that should be something that uh, should not be there. There should not be so much hero worship. Very good. Vidisha, you don't have a hero at all. So no much. I'm trying to recover. But Vidisha, some prominent MP from Vidisha, can you name? Sir, Atal Bihari Bajpayee was a prominent MP, Sushma Swaraj, even Sivraj Singh Chauhan was once an MP from Vidisha. Sushma Swaraj was a contestant once from Vidisha. Very good. Sir, Nitya Ambani, you were there for two months, you didn't get even a rupee? You said zero. Yes, I did not get a rupee. Why? Sir, not paid a stipend kind of internship, sir. Oh, great. They have such thing also? Yes, sir, you can apply for internship at Nitya Ayo. Without payment. I mean, sitting government will tell us that. He said, don't take anything, okay? No, but that state, what project did you work on? Did you work on any project or you are just working on trying to know objectively? Sir, I worked on two projects. First was infrastructure development northeast. State infrastructure development northeast. Any particular state or general? In general, sir. I tried to write a status report on that and that was published in FICCI at that point of time. Oh, 2017. And secondly, sir, I was working on the financial borrowings of Indian Railway Finance Corporation. Oh, sir. Good. Now, about the Northeast. Yes, sir. Tell me, infrastructure, what was your finding? Sir, uh, what I really found was, uh, for a very long time, we were not keeping Northeast as an important part of our infrastructure connectivity. Uh, that was mainly because either uh, uh, initially we have this policy that we should keep northeast, uh, we should not inter we should interfere as as less as possible in northeast. Secondly, sir, uh, we did not realize the potential of northeast. Now with the look east policy and act east policy, we realize that northeast can be the engine of growth for the whole country when we connect it to the uh, Asian countries. Thirdly, sir, uh, because of the uh, geographical features and geological condition, it was very difficult for us to develop the infrastructure. But with time, we developed new tunneling methods, we developed new bridging methods, and it became feasible for us to develop infrastructure in the Northeast, bring, taking railways down there. And now we have a plan to connect all the major uh, cities on Northeast, especially the capitals by railways. So, is there any connectivity all for from Northeast? Sorry, I mean, sir. capitals of the Northeast states? Sir, by railways, we have not done it till now. We are we're planning to complete it by 2024. 2024. So all the state capitals will be conducted. Uh, no, all of them are there. Perhaps I will not tell. In Canada, there is a big place. Right? Dimapur is there. Mizoram also. Okay. Now there is some connectivity for Tripura via Bangladesh. What is that? Rail connectivity? Are you aware? Sorry, sir, I am not aware about it. Okay, no issue. Okay, civil engineering is this, huh? Good. Just very simple. What are different types of bricks that are used in construction? So bricks can be classified on the basis of a lot of things. Firstly, sir, if we decide to qualify classify on the basis of materials, then it can be sir uh, mud bricks, it can be concrete bricks. If we try to decide on the basis of uh, size of the brick, then there is standard brick, which is 10 plus. What is the size of the standard brick? What is the size? Sir, it is uh, 19 uh, in length, 9 cross 9 in centimeter. Okay. So, so after the... Uh, how about hollow bricks using motion? Yes, the hollow bricks. Then there can be dry bricks, there can be burnt bricks. Fly ash? Fly ash bricks, sir. Sir, tell me how will you construct brick, fly ash bricks? 
Because the unknown force not being in some way, the pressure will be obviously at the distance. How do you transfer it? Like that? Then fly away, no? How do you transport? Sir, transportation of flyers is a major issue because it is the major issue. As a civil engineer, think of something, it's very easy. Slurry, have a pipeline, yes, have a thermal power plant, do stuff, play the bricks. Okay, yes, thank you. Thank you, sir. Shubham. Yes, sir. Shubham, you are from Vidisha. Yes, sir. Vidisha has a lot of historical sites. Yes, sir. Tell me something about them. So, firstly, we have Sanchi Stupa, mm -hmm. which is very near to Vidisha, 8 kilometers away from Vidisha. Mm -hmm. Then we have Sir Udaigiri Caves, mm -hmm. uh, which is also near Vidisha. We have Jain Caves and the Hindu Caves. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, sir, we have Acharan Tirth, mm -hmm. which is one of the very oldest old temple. Mm -hmm. uh, then, sir, we have Mala Devi, Bajra Mat, mm -hmm. which are also very old Jain temples. Uh, and we have Kham Baba or the Hilodiaris Pillar, mm -hmm. that is also there in Vidisha. Then, sir, many artifacts have also been developed in Vidisha. For example, uh, uh, there is a Yakshini, which is very famous, which has been developed, which has been got from Vidisha. Then we have uh, old monuments of old uh, sculptures of uh, Vishnu Bhagwan, and even uh, Varavtar of Vishnu Bhagwan is there. Then uh, Varavtar is located where? It is located in one of the caves. For the caves. One of your hobbies is mentoring students. Yes, sir. So, what mentoring do you give? So, mentoring is uh, one of my very old hobbies. Mm -hmm. I started when I was in my second year of college. Mm -hmm. I started with mentoring in Avanti Fellows. There I was mentoring uh, the students who are preparing for IIT J. Mm -hmm. With times I started mentoring my juniors for the college classes because I was part of the Mitra team of my college. Mm -hmm. After graduating from college, I started mentoring the students who are preparing for civil services. Mm -hmm. Once I qualified one stage and I started mentoring them. Mm -hmm. For example, sir, recently this pandemic, I formed a group of 29 students whom I was mentoring to prepare for answer writing and how to approach civil services. They all were my juniors, sir. Okay. How is heartfulness meditation different from normal meditation? <coughs> so the object of meditation and heartfulness meditation is our heart. We imagine that there is a divine source of light in our heart and we are trying to imbibe that uh, divine source of light in our personality. Secondly, sir, uh, there is a technique of transmission that is uh, very prominent in heartfulness. In which, sir, uh, we, the, 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 uh, the, the guide is transferring a source of energy in our body. It is also called pranahuti, and that helps us to uh, get into the meditation practice uh, quickly. So that is something unique about heartfulness. Okay. Uh, what are the sources of revenue for the railways? We see that railways is a very high expenditure. Yes. What are the sources of their revenue? So the main source of revenue for railways is the freight, mm -hmm. especially the coal. Mm -hmm. Around 70% of railways revenue is earned from freight mm -hmm. and 50% of them that is from coal. Mm -hmm. Secondly, sir, the passengers. Mm -hmm. Although railway is making loss in passengers because it has social obligations, uh, but passengers also are very uh, important. Around we are transporting around 800 crore people every year. Mm -hmm. Third source is the non fair revenues. Mm -hmm. For example, advertisement. Uh, even so, now we are trying to uh, bring in new source of revenues like asset monetization, mm -hmm. station redevelopment, and even uh, running in private trains. So this will be the major source of revenue in future. Sir. Okay. There's a problem of cross subsidization in railways. Yes, sir. So who subsidizes whom? Which revenue source subsidizes the other? So the freight revenue, that is the revenue collected for, for transporting freight, mm -hmm. subsidizes the revenue transported for passengers. Okay. And what impact does it have on the finances of the railways? Firstly, sir, it has led to decline in our model share. For example, sir, during independence, our model share was around 82% Indian railways. But now it has declined to only 29% in the recent uh, 2020. That shows that we are losing our model share because of cost subsidization to roadways and the waterways and the airways. Secondly, sir, because of this cost subsidization, our freight become very expensive, freight traffic. And thirdly, sir, because, of, uh, because we are always privatizing the passengers, and hence, timely uh, delivery of freights also become issue, mm -hmm. which leads to overall increase in the logistic cost for the country 
and hence uh, our uh, competitiveness in the world market also get affected. Okay, okay. Since you mentioned share of the modes of travel, can you tell me uh, what is the current status of the Udan scheme? Sorry, sir. I have not. Uh, I am not sure about the numbers. Okay, and what is the objective of Udan scheme? So, Udan scheme basically uh, is planning to connect uh, the major cities of the country through air connectivity. Even the tier 2 and tier 3 cities also have to be connected through the uh, air connectivity. And this has been done in the public private partnership model through the budget uh, viability gap funding model. Okay, so uh, have some airports been uh, developed in Madhya Pradesh also under the scheme? Yes, sir. The, 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 the Gwalior Airport mm -hmm. and the Satna Airport have been developed under the schemes. Mm -hmm. And even the Khajrao Air Airport uh, only had a, initially only had one uh, airstrip, but now they are developing into a full fledged airport. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, Subham, you introduce the word.